All right, so this sourdough recipe that I have been making a lot is one that takes a little bit longer and I do have to leave it to rise overnight. And it does have a few more ingredients in it. I think there's something really beneficial to having a recipe that's just flour, salt, and water. And I do have a recipe like that, but this is our favorite. It has flour, salt, and water, but it also has honey and melted butter in it. Everybody's gotten to bed, the kitchen's somewhat cleaned up, and we are going to make some sourdough bread for tomorrow. So the recipe I'm using, I wrote down a while ago, so I'm not sure the original source of where I found kind of the base. I know I have changed the amount of starter. Um, so what have you. I think the main thing that's important when making sourdough bread is using my kitchen scale. So I measure everything in weight rather than measuring with cups. Now I fed my sourdough right after um, the kids went to bed. So maybe an hour or so ago I fed it. I actually didn't cover it back up. It's kind of my reminder to make bread because I know I'll cover this up before I go to bed. Um, so it's good and bubbly. Now I used to be really good about feeding my starter rate right around lunchtime and then I would make my bread right when the kids went to bed. And so I probably sat six-ish hours, give or take a few, after I fed it. Now, this one, on the other hand, has only been sitting about an hour. So I find that it doesn't really matter to me. I don't really have a huge preference on how long I let it sit. I know that's probably very different for some people, but my life is busy, my life is crazy, and if I need to stick to such a strict schedule, this probably isn't going to happen. All right, so the first thing I measure is my warm water. I always put this in my bowl first, so nothing So the first thing I'm going to measure is warm water. I always put it in the bowl first so that nothing sticks to the bowl. All right, the measurement is for 350 grams of warm water. Now this is for one of my loaf pans. I'm not even sure exactly how large this is. There's 11 and a half inches, so a little bit longer. But I can link down in the description below the size I have. I just got it off of Amazon, so I can link um, to it for you if you're looking for this specific size. But if you don't have this size pan, don't worry about it. I have used my two um, smaller pans, maybe about this size. I call them like my meatloaf pan, and that's worked fine as well. Now, I don't double this bread recipe. I used to use a different recipe, and I would use two bowls and make two at a time, and I don't. It's just so easy and simple that I don't really need to. So the first ingredient is warm water, but actually, well, before I do that, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. Before I do that, I am going to be adding some melted butter to the recipe, and I do not have a microwave, so I am going to melt it on my stovetop. So I'm gonna get that going on low so it's melted by the time I need it. So the recipe's for 30 grams of melted butter, now, I usually throw like two and a half tablespoons in the pan and call it good, and that seems to be pretty accurate. So I know I just said um, to do a good job as far as um, weighing ingredients, but the butter, that just seems to be about right, about two and a half tablespoons. The 350 grams of warm water, I just use warm tap water. Okay, I was totally off. It's about two cups. I think I'm still thinking the days of making two loaves. All right, anyways. Then I add my starter, 400 grams. Zero that out. Now it's active and a little bit bubbly, and that's what I like. So I'm adding quite a bit. I know a lot of other people are probably far better bread makers than I am. So this is what has been working for me. And I just feed my sourdough a lot and I feed it often to keep it alive, keep it going, and keeping us in bread. All right, there we go. So about 400 grams of this active sourdough starter. Whenever I'm done doing anything with my starter, I like to take a spatula and scrape my sides down so that I don't get hard parts. I would say the biggest problem I have with my starter is if I 
I'm not on top of it. It will get moldy and I don't like dealing with that at all. So I have two of these Crocs that I use. Now when I started, I just used jars, but I really just hated working out of jars. I wanted something with a really wide opening. So I got two of these Crocs. They have worked great. And then I just keep two covers on them um, at all times. So this is just something that sits on my counter. Now my butter is ready, so I am going to add it. Now, out of curiosity, I'm gonna measure this just so I can give you an idea. So I was aiming for 30 grams. I'm gonna scrape this all out. And two and a half tablespoons ended up equaling 26, so pretty close. And then we're going to add probably the most important ingredients, salt. I usually do add this to my water and I just forgot. Seven grams about of salt. Now that I just added based on another recipe, that seemed to be a good amount. and 14 grams of honey. When I'm adding my honey, I always make sure I add at least the 14 grams. Sometimes I can get a little heavy handed with it and add too much. We got a lot of solid honey this year, but it's made baking and things like this super easy. Um, not nearly as messy as when it's super runny, so fine by me. So I know this is going to be less than a spoonful, so this is how much I'm adding. We'll see how much it is. 16 grams. Oh, 14 grams. So 14 grams of honey. I got a little bit on a spoon, so I'm gonna put that in. So I'm making this in my mixer because I feel like it does knead my dough better than I do. And I end up with a smoother bread that really pretty, pretty top when I do this. But if it's dirty, I just use a bowl and it looks a little rougher and that's okay. All right, the last ingredient is flour, and it's 800 grams. I do not have enough, so I'll get some more. So I will use any flour I have to make my bread, but I only feed my sourdough with organic flour. I usually just buy the Good & Gather organic all-purpose flour from Target. Honestly, I've been having a little bit more trouble finding it and the price has been going up and up and up over the last year or so. So I'm not really quick to share it on here because I selfishly want to keep buying it. So 800 grams of flour. There we go. I always double check my recipe before I get it going. Salt, water, starter, honey, melted butter, flour. Got all those things. Do I have flour in my face? No. I love when I am baking in the kitchen and then I go back to watch the videos with Matt when he's editing and there will always be like flour just somewhere <laughs> on my face. And I'm like, oh, I just want to wipe it off my face in the time being as I'm watching it. It doesn't work that way. All right, we're going to get this mixed up. I'm using my dough hook which I need to replace one of these days because it's looking rough. Those of you who have hung out in my kitchen with me a few times know I'm not super great about following strict rules when it comes to cooking, baking, all the things. I usually have my dough hook running in my mixer for about eight minutes, but honestly, it's usually long enough to do a couple dishes or get the things ready I need for bread. And when I think it looks good, I make bread. So while that is going, I'm going to get an area ready to roll out my bread. I do roll this recipe with a rolling pin. I just find it works much better. So I'm using my pan, I'm going to get it oiled or buttered, and I like to set this above wherever I'm doing my bread so that I can see how big my loaf should be. I'm not great at guessing if I don't have it in front of me, so that helps a lot. While that dough is going, I am going to clean up this mess here and get my oven preheated. We are in Minnesota, middle of winter here, beginning of winter I suppose, we're in December, and 
it's cold. <laughs> we do have our wood stove going, but I'm gonna get a much better rise out of my bread if it has a more set temp to rise at. So what I like to do is first get everything out of my oven. Turn on the light so I don't forget it's on. And sometimes if like on a hot summer day, my light is enough for my bread to rise. But what I do in the winter especially is I will turn my oven on for a little bit when my dough is mixing up. And then once it gets warm, a good warm, not hot, I'll turn my oven off. And when my dough is ready, I'll put it in here overnight to rise. Let's get this pan from our butter cleaned up quick. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flour down. As Matt, I'm not worried about making a mess. All right. So I would say it ran eight-ish minutes and it looks really smooth. That's how I decide it's done. It's basically connected to my dough hook, so heavy. And it is one big lump. So it makes this really nice smooth dough when I do it in here with the dough hook. If I do it by hand, it is always not this good. I'm not that good, I guess, at kneading dough by hand. So I'm just gonna roll it out on the counter here. For now, I'm just kinda putting a little bit of flour on it so it doesn't stick. But this dough is so buttery and it really doesn't stick like most of them do. All right, so I'm gonna kind of make this rectangle shape. Let's get it a start. And then I am going to just roll it out the length of my pan, but wider. I've got kind of the general shape. Then I just roll it up just like cinnamon rolls and I keep it really tight. Now I did go a little bit bigger than the pan and then I just kind of tuck in the ends and roll over that seam a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is get rid of like all the air bubbles that are going to be in there. At least in my head that's what I'm doing. Alright so I've got this pretty loaf and then I just put it in my pan, kind of pick it up, set it in, see it in there. Now I always squeeze it down into the corners so that I have the closest to this rectangle shape and regular bread shape that I'm going to get. All right, before my oven gets too hot, I'm gonna turn this off. So I'm just feeling it feels good. I'm gonna turn my oven off and then just keep it shut till I'm ready to put my bread in there. What I do is I take, this is just a white, um, I call them dish towels. Some people call them flour sacks, that kind of material. And I just get it wet. I use cold water, I don't know that it matters. And what this does, in my humble opinion, is kind of keeps everything um, from drying out in the night, especially since I'm putting it in a warm oven. What will happen is it'll suck a lot of the moisture out of this towel. But this is a towel that I'm putting in my oven, so I don't want it on. If you burn your house down because you left your oven on and put a towel in there, don't blame me for that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put this in the oven overnight in the warmed up oven, but turned off overnight. And I'll keep this light on. Now Matt and I kind of have this unspoken rule in the mornings. In case I forget to tell him that I mixed up some bread, he sees this light on when he comes out. He's usually making breakfast for the kids and he'll just turn the oven on. So if you are watching our vlogs, I will be sure to share with you tomorrow the bread baking, or I'll have Matt share with you um, because he usually does it. But if not, what you are going to need to do in the morning is I will take my bread out, leave it in a spot where it's not going to raise anymore, but it's also not going to fall. So for me, that's usually the front of my stove top. If I put it on the back, it'll raise more. So. If I put it somewhere else in my kitchen, it's going to fall. So this is usually my safe spot. It's warm, but not too warm and not too cold. 
I'll preheat my oven to 400 degrees and then I'll put it in for 30 minutes and when it's done I like to butter or oil the top then and take it immediately out of the pan to cool. I just use a wire rack and cover it with a towel until I'm ready to cut it for it to cool down and things. I love to eat the nice warm bread for breakfast but a lot of times this ends up being for lunch.